What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics. We have a brand new week, so of course we go with those market trends to talk about. That's right, we're talking about three up, three down. We're gonna give you three hot and three cold market trends in the comic community. Jack, how's your week been so far? It's been a good week. Uh, just this weekend, just had my 35th birthday, so celebrated that with family. And uh, great week coming in with comics. A lot going on. A lot of these upcoming um, online conventions. Uh, you may have seen an announcement from Mainframe Comic Con that myself and Brian and Simpleman's Comics will be teaming up with the Mainframe Comic Con team to bring an online comic convention right here to the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, as well as some other YouTube channels that will be participating. But we've also got the upcoming DC Comic Convention coming on, San Diego Comic Con, and all of those kind of conventions are bringing a lot of announcements, a lot of news, and a lot of speculation on future announcements and news, which is affecting the secondary market. Yeah, it might not be the cons the way you're used to it, but they're going to come on nonetheless. And we're really excited about participating in this upcoming Mainframe Comic Con. But we're going to get into those three up trends, starting right now with that first one. And we are talking about Alien and Predator. They are no longer going to be a dark horse. They're coming over to Marvel. I, I, this is a topic I'm really excited to talk about. And it's one that I'm excited to talk about with the full transparency that I am not an alien or a predator fan. Um, I know that they, they're from the era that I grew up watching those movies, but for whatever reason, they just didn't connect with me. If I'm being honest, it probably scared me shitless as a kid. And then as an adult, it didn't have that nostalgia connection, but I am very excited about these properties now. Um, I enjoyed the last predator movie that recently came out. I know it didn't do that well, but I thought it was a fun movie, but all of that doesn't matter. Because these properties are now part of Fox, part now owned by Disney. And it was only natural that we saw this publishing move from Dark Horse to Marvel. Now, you, you can sit here and say, well, Alien and Predator have never really sold comics and things like that. And all the negatives that people can point to. But, Brian, I think people tend to kind of forget their comics history. Um, Conan was not successful for Dark Horse at the end. Star Wars was not successful at all, which is it's something that I cannot stress enough. Nobody cared about those Dark Horse Star Wars series at the end of those runs. Um, they, had, they were just a niche area of comic collecting. And I think that's all going to change because we've seen Conan and Star Wars get elevated. I expect the exact same thing to happen with Alien and Predator. I know a lot of people are speculating on a crossover, the David Finch image with the Iron Man helmet got everybody excited marvel's already said not so fast it's not going to happen right off the bat if at all but either way i think we're going to get two great series with two great creators i think we'll get great cover art we'll probably get some great exclusive variants which you can check out at exclusivevariants.com as they are announced um but i i think that this is going to be great and i think that both of these properties are going to get elevated and I think that we can see some exciting stuff going forward, both from Marvel Comics and from Fox through Disney. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big movie guy. I like both those properties. I tend to like the first two Alien movies better than the other ones. Same with Predator. I like Predator number one, the first one. Come here, I'm here, kill me. And the Adrian Brody one I thought was pretty good. But even more so, I'm a Disney fan, so I'm excited that Ripley is now a Disney princess. <laughs> Then the next one we're going to talk about in three up this week. This is funny because we've talked about this on three down quite a lot, but we are talking about walking dead with that Negan lives and all that other stuff. We got the season, the season finale coming up. There's a lot of buzz around the walking dead franchise. Yeah, Brian, you're exactly right. And this is why I'm excited to talk about this one on the upside, because I feel like we're constantly bagging on walking dead. Um, ever since the, the comic series ended, people have suddenly missed this series, right? And it's kind of one of those things where you take it for granted, 193 issues, 193 months, years and years worth of comics. Um, and then it, it's gone. And this Negan Lives book showed you the fact that Walking Dead fans are still, they're still a, a absolute demand for these books. They're still, they're still in existence. They're still out there. They're going to come out of the woodwork. Um, they want to not just get these cool variants that we're seeing, but they also wanted to read this story. Robert Kirkman has already teased Clementine lives. Clementine is, of course, the character from the video game who did not appear on the show. So now if we're going to get a comic that brings the video game into canon, 
that to me opens up the door for Daryl. Why can't we get Daryl lives? Um, and then Robert Kirkman recently did an interview with a YouTube channel where he made some comments sort of to the vein of, I, I kind of see myself writing Walking Dead comics forever. I, I'll write Walking Dead the college years and Walking Dead. And so he, he made all these jokes, but what he was basically saying is um, he wanted to end the story, but now he misses it. And he, he, he thinks that there'll always be Walking Dead material released. So I think that really this is a property we may have to relook at and people shouldn't be so quick to drop all these books. Now, these key first appearances, you don't have the TV tie-ins that really propped up their values. But I look at the overall value, Brian, of Walking Dead number one, and I've seen that one drop. And I think that maybe that's been a premature drop. And I, But I also think that like key issues like issue number 193, the last issue, I think that's always going to have value. And I think any of these one shots that come out coming forward, I think retailers are going to really have to pay attention to because the demand has proven it will be there. Yeah, I mean, we've even talked kind of down about Walking Dead a couple of times, so we can't say we haven't. But I think the news that you just brought up kind of, you can't, you can't keep it down because anytime Robert Kirkman, he could tweet something and you never know what it's going to spike. Right. And, and Walking Dead is one of those, it's a staple in pop culture. We talked about the replayability from kids that come in after that didn't get to see it live on TV, but with streaming services and go back and watch it. So it might always be relevant. And it might garner interest where people want to go back and read those books. Um, I heard rumor that Ali's outlet has compendiums right now for super cheap. So you might want to check those out as well. Absolutely. Then the last one for the three up this week, we got some Michael Keaton, my favorite Batman. We got some news recently about him and that's kind of spiked some interest in the whole Batman beyond. Is that where this is coming from? Or do you have more to tell about it, Jack? No, definitely, definitely movie news, but it's deeper than Michael Keaton. Um, you've got reports that Michael Keaton is choice A. If they can't work it out with Michael Keaton, they could go to Christian Bale. There's talks of Johnny Depp for the Joker. If Johnny Depp isn't interested, they may pivot to Jim Carrey. Um, either way, all of these names that are being brought up, if that doesn't get you excited about a Batman Beyond film, I honestly don't care who plays Terry McGinnis. Because the characters around Terry are going to be so good. And look, I'll eat some crow right now. I have often said that I cannot envision a Batman Beyond feature anytime soon. Looks like I'm wrong. I can accept that. Uh, you know, and I'm excited for it either way. Um, it, I think it comes from in the heels of the Joker, though. I think the Joker movie doing well makes DC really look at kind of the way in which they're presenting. They were trying to be Marvel 2.0. That didn't work. And now they're going a different direction. And you know what? I think that's something guys like you and I can relate to because it's been our approach, uh, you know, with every aspect of our business where we have tried to not compete directly with those who would be seen as our direct competition and instead try to do things different and try to do things our own way. And that's what, what I see DC doing right now. Um, and I have to applaud it because I think every move is adding heat to to things that and properties that have not had it. Uh, so, you know, it's been real easy. You mentioned bagging on uh, Walking Dead. It's been real easy to bag on a DC extended universe. That may not be happening anymore. So it'll be real interesting to see, Brian, what happens in this upcoming DC uh, online convention, what is announced. Rumors uh, I've heard of like two movies being announced. So it'll be real interesting to see what we get. Yeah, because there's rumor they're bringing him in to the, the Ezra Miller flash movie right and then yes. set up a batman beyond yes but they say you always remember your first and michael keaton was my first batman so i think that's why he's so beloved to me no oh, he'll always be batman to me so that's it for the three up portion we're going to shift right now directly into that three down we always talk about some great buying opportunities in here the first one we're talking about this one especially when the aquaman movie came out rumors were coming rampant about what's going to be in the sequel people were buying this up left and right but it's kind of cold right now, and we're talking about the trench. But I think it's a buy now, Brian. It's a must buy. And, uh, you know, the Simplements Comics YouTube family has spoken. They want those buying opportunities, and we're trying to give those to you. And this is a great one because you mentioned the fact that there was talk about this movie. And if you're not familiar with the trench, you're essentially talking about a horror property. Um, you know, it's an element in, of, you know, of the underwater society. Um, it, it, there's a lot of new villains and characters and, and it's a different aesthetic for Aquaman. 
Uh, and it was part of that great, great Jeff Johns run that really introduced a lot of people like myself who weren't really reading Aquaman comics to reading an Aquaman comic series. So I really think that this is one that had legs from the get-go. Now, there was talk with all the problems with the DC Extended Universe that this project was on hold, but James Wan, the director, has come out recently and said, this is not a project on hold, it's just a project that may have shifted. Now the talk is it won't actually be a project featuring Aquaman in it, that they don't feel like they need Aquaman to tell this story, that the story of the trench can be told without Aquaman, but take place within Aquaman's universe. Also, this may be a, a, not a movie like was originally talked. Now the HBO Max deal opens up the door for a possible film or a possible series on the streaming service. And I think it would play really well. And then again, we just talked about the Joker thing. The Joker movie opens up the world to DC to sit and say, yeah, let's do a horror movie. And you know what? Just like the Joker did not need Batman in it. I don't necessarily think the trench needs Aquaman to be successful and to be a standalone successful horror movie that then adds elements to the Aquaman universe. I'll be honest. There's a lot of those DC movies that I didn't like, but Aquaman was one that pleasantly surprised me. I couldn't stand Aquaman in Justice League. It was like Aquaman from California games or something. It was like, my man, the movie, the standalone movie, Jason Momoa killed that role. So whether he's in it or not, I'd love to see him in it. But we talk about how some of those DC movies stunk. Marvel didn't have all hits. Like they had some Hulk. Remember the, the couple Hulk movies? Neither of those did great. I think DC starting to get their stuff together. And I think sooner or later it's going to be slept on and they're going to come up there and have some kick-ass movies. I think they've had some good ones. Shazam. We, we both, you and I both like Shazam. Absolutely. But the trench is something I'm definitely interested in. And these are nowhere near how much they were going for. Right oh now. no. Almost back down to cover price. Now you can find these books for. But we're going to shift over to the next one. I think this other one's a buying opportunity. Also, I think although it's down right now, I think this is going to shift really quick. And we're talking about the old guard with that Netflix movie from with Charlize Theron's coming out, right? Yeah, so this one makes no sense to me. It's, it has to be on the downside of the list. And I think when people see, you know, the graphic for this, they're going to sit there and go, why would Old Guard be down? You're just, you know, we're recording this on the 7th. This will come out on the 8th. The movie comes out on the 10th. So you're going to see this two days before um, the movie comes out. It seems like this is the time when the property should be hottest. I was on eBay looking at copies for $9.99, $12.99. And the trailers are great. The trailers are great. The hype for the movie is great. The reviews thus far have been like seven out of 10, which you have to understand that's coming from critics. That's coming. This is a comic book movie. And that's coming from people who are dissecting it in the Martin Scorsese way of looking at film versus the, oh man, this is just a kick-ass movie. So I look at the fact that it, it it's getting positive reviews from critics. Maybe not those 9.5s. Once you get the like actual people like you and I watching this film, you're going to see those scores go up. So the reality is all the numbers are positive right now. And, and everything about this movie looks like this should be, this should be super successful. Plus what the hell else is coming out right now? Like we're not getting all of these other feature films. You're not getting to speculate on Black Widow. You're not getting to speculate on Wonder Woman. You're not getting to speculate on the Eternals. This is the one thing we have coming yet for whatever reason, the comic book market has slept on this one. And uh, it surprises me because if this is big and successful, we could see sequels. Um, you know, you can't just assume that this is going to be a one-off thing. They could write more of the comic. They could add more. You know, there's a million different ways they could do this. Um, and it's like you said, this, this is film essentially has everything going for it. But for whatever the reason, uh, whether people didn't like the story or just what people are talking about. There's been a lot of talk lately about rare variants. There's been a lot of talk lately about um, different MCU characters people are excited about. A lot of talk recently about dc comics and it just the the independent comics game has kind of lost some steam with the pandemic uh and i think that this is a, a property that certainly is a prime example of that but great buying opportunity because if this movie comes out and kicks ass you can best believe these books are going to be going for a lot more next week so if you believe in this book and you haven't gotten yourself a couple copies now maybe the time I'll even say more to that. You say, if you haven't got a couple copies, if you're one of those people that sold it right when the option news came out and made all that good money, now's the perfect time to pick it back up again for Absolutely. pennies on the dollar from what you sold it for. Absolutely. 
Then the last one we're going to talk about on the down portion this week, we're going with DC Comics again, but we're talking about that Jeff Johns Justice Society. Yeah, and, okay, so this is not an a indictment of this product. This, this has been cold forever. Justice Society has just never really taken off. Um, but Jeff Johns wrote the Justice Society coming off of his Stars and Stripes number zero. There, the, the, some of the Alex Ross covers are iconic. We've all seen them. You may just not have ever really realized what run this was from. There's also one in 10 incentives for each book. And there's some of the most creative cover art designs. And uh, there's some connecting variants. There's, there's some really cool stuff in that run. Um, but it is of uber importance right now because Stargirl is a big hit. It, it, we've talked about how much we like it. I keep watching episode after episode that comes out on a weekly basis, and it just feels like the most elevated DC television property they've ever done. Even when they start dealing with like the high school girl stuff, um, there's still a badass superhero element to it more than what you would typically see from something, say, on a CW, which is interesting because it was announced that it's moving for season two from the DC Universe app to the CW. So I hope that they keep the same level of quality that they've been doing um, moving over to the CW. But the show has a lot of people interested, and I and we've heard that DC wants to really push into the Justice Society more and more. I think that this run is really primed to be a hot one. I think that a lot of these variants could take off. It also is the run that really used Black Adam as a main villain more than kind of ever in comics because Black Adam really wasn't used real heavily. So this run is one that I think is going to be big for the Black Adam movie. I think it's going to be big for the the star girl show. And I think that it's quite possible this justice society that they're building on the star girl TV show, we can end up seeing in some other form of media, whether it's a movie or a a television show, all of their own. Um, They're definitely building something. I mean, we're just episodes away from a television green lantern. And I don't think enough people realize that. Yeah. You mentioned black Adam. I mean, we know black Adam movies coming in production. I'm not saying these people are going to show up in there, but all it needs is a name drop to reference something of the sort. And next thing you know, there's going to be attention on it. You're going to have some alert or some news article out there and people are going to start buying these books up. But there it is, guys. That's our three up and three down this week. We are going to put comments on the screen right now from last week. While we're doing that, comment down below. Let, let us know what you think of the three up, three down this week. Let us know what your hot picks are and what your cold picks are. Never know. Those comments might make it in the next video. This is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.